is taught. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tut. Today we're taking a look at how to recreate this sort of written on animated text effect. Now there are several, several ways to do this. Uh, this is just one of them and it's one that I find works quite well and is pretty quick to do. So without any further ado, let's just jump right in. Um, as you can see here, we have a single text layer um, and a mask layer inside of which we have several strokes that are all animating themselves. And I'm just going to take you through how to create that from scratch, okay? So I'll just dump all this into a folder called example so we don't get confused. And we'll start from the beginning. Let's create a new composition. 1920 by 1080, 60 frames per second, 30 seconds is fine. That'll probably be far too much, but that's okay. And we'll just quickly create a new background by dropping in a solid there, okay? Um, first thing you're gonna want to do is just type out whatever word it is that you want to animate. Let's have this one say, um, tip top. No, there's too many letters that are the same. Uh, let's do hello again. That's a nice one to do. Um, position in the middle uh, of your composition or wherever it is that you want it to be. And the setup is done. We're ready to animate, okay? So what you're gonna want to do is with no layer selected, just go up to your pen tool and Basically, play around until you get a stroke width um, and style that will cover your letters. It doesn't matter what it looks like because it's going to be hidden anyway. But say, for example, I just quickly draw a line here. You can see that um, the uh, stroke is going to cover the entirety of the letter, probably a bit too much, actually. So what you're going to want to do is just quickly draw over one segment and just bring that stroke width up or down until you can see it's just about covering um, sort of each stroke of your letter, okay? And then, quite simply, you're just gonna go through and cover each pen stroke with a stroke from the um, digital pen. So what I mean by that is, think of how this letter would be formed, okay? You draw the two H's like this, the H vertical parts, and then you draw the crossbar um, separately. So that would actually have to be three motions of the pen, okay? So we draw it with three strokes. Bearing in mind that the direction from which you start will be the direction where the actual stroke starts when you draw that too. Just make sure it's covered, but don't worry too much if there's a few little bits poking out and we'll go into Y a bit later. So how do you draw an E? You usually start there, flick around and then come back and do the two crossbars. So we'll do that. Just cover that up. And you can see here that I've missed out a bit, but I'm not too worried and I'll show you why later. Just going to come back through and draw the next two segments. Um, again, making sure that all these are on separate shape layers by clicking off each one after you've drawn it. You can do it all on a single layer, but it makes it a bit more difficult um, later down the line. Okay, so I'm just going to tweak that bit actually and bring it in. It doesn't need to be that far out at all. Okay, keep going then on these L's. Like so. Now I could just copy this because it's the same letter, but we're going for that hand drawn thing. So this will actually give it a slightly different motion as it comes onto the page. We'll do an O here. And just hold Alt to um, individually control these handles here so that we can tweak it a bit better. Oops. And then a final one for the exclamation mark. Perfect. Okay, so what's gonna happen now is we're gonna animate each of these so that they um, go from the zero mark all the way up to the hundred mark. Um, but at the moment you can see it's not gonna look very natural because the edges are completely straight. Um, if you had a pen or something, it'd probably be round or you know a bit more shapely than just a straight line. Now, I have a plugin for this which speeds it up, but bear in mind if you do want to go through and just change all the caps of these lines, all you have to do is twirl down, go to contents, your shape, your stroke, and change the line cap to round cap and change the line join to round join if you want to as well. Uh, like I said, I've got a plugin for this because doing that individually is a right pain. So I'm just going to select all these layers and use butt capper <laughs> um, to make them round. Now you can actually download butt capper. Uh, it is free or it's a recommended donation, um, but I know most of you will get it for free and that's fine. Um, you can download it, install it. Uh, it's really simple. All it does give you a little interface so you can choose straight, round or protruding caps on your lines. Saves you a lot of time. Perfect. So now with all of our layers selected, I'm just going to go up here to the uh, add next to the stroke menu 
and choose trim paths. Uh, now, if you twirl down any one of the trim paths, it doesn't matter, and just click the little stopwatch to add an end frame on that layer. Uh, if it doesn't select all of these, um, then all you have to do is just copy and paste those keyframes, but most of the time it should, as long as you've got your layers selected. And that's perfect. Uh, control, shift, and the right arrow will move you along 10 frames. I'm going to do it to one second. That seems about right. Um, actually, maybe 40 frames in a second. Obviously, that'll change depending on your frame rate and just hit that keyframe button again, move back to the first one, change all those values to zero. And now as you can see, as you scrub along, all these lines start to draw themselves onto the page. But they're a bit linear at the moment, they don't look very good. Uh, we're gonna add some easing to them. So we'll just quickly select all our keyframes, right click on them, keyframe assistant, easy ease. And then we're gonna switch to our graph editor, if you can't see something like this, if your graph goes sort of up like that, um, you're looking at the wrong one. You need to look at the speed graph rather than the value graph. Zoom all the way in there. And I'm just going to drag this handle all the way to the left. And what that does is make it go from fast to slow. Yeah, looks a little bit better. But they're all animating at the same time, which isn't really how you draw things. So what you're going to need to do now is just manually go through and make them line up however you want. You can offset them, um, but it looks a bit robotic if you've done that. So let's just go through and do it manually. Bearing in mind that it will be, this is the first shape and this is the last shape. So you take your first shape and just about where it gets to the point where it's almost finishing, I'm just gonna move the second line to start. Just as that gets to a point where it covers the crossbar, I'm gonna move that crossbar to start. And we're basically gonna keep on going. This is a new letter, so we can just do it there can take this section, which is the top one, probably want that to be last actually. So I'll take that one there above it, push this above it so it's uh, nice and neat. That's just joining in. So then we'd have this one here. New letter, it's just an L. Again, there's only one of those. So we can just shift that one along. Maybe bring it a bit closer. And again, new letter, that's an O. And a new letter for the exclamation mark. So we can see now, Perfect, okay? But at the moment it looks ugly. We're just drawing over our shape. That's fine. All you need to do is select all of those layers and pre-comp them. You don't have to do this step, but it makes it nice and neat. Just call that mask. Call it mask two because I've already got one from the example. Um, and then the last step is just to select your hello layer, making sure it's below your mask and go over to the track mat and change it to alpha mat. And what this does is only shows this content of this layer when there is content of the layer above it. So you'll see what I mean. At the moment there's nothing if we hit play it draws itself on according to the mask that we've drawn, okay? So if we go to say here, for example, we can see it's halfway through. You can notice that that's like that. And you can actually see that um, there's a little bit, uh, the line we drew is a little bit thick. So what you can do is actually go back through, select that line, and we could drop it down to about 29, say, and see if that fixes anything. Yeah, it takes a bit of that trim off, probably a bit too much still, make it 27. Obviously, the more care you take in the setup, the easier this step will be. There you go, perfect, that's fixed it. Um, so you wouldn't have to do that, but just for the sake of demonstration, that works perfectly fine. So let's just trim that layer down and watch it on loop a couple of times. Perfect, I'm happy with that. So that's really all there is to, to it. It's not super complicated, it's actually quite fun and it's really easy to do. So thanks very much for watching everybody. I hope you found it useful. If you did, that's great. If you didn't, maybe next time. Um, and hopefully I'll see you next time too. So thanks for watching everybody and I'll see you all again. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks and tutorials. Thanks for watching.